That's the church at the back.
Here's some of the farm animals at the horticultural show. Chickens and the rabbits. What was he called, Miles? Geese. No, what, sorry. What? Are you back there? Are you back there? Are you back so yeah. huge to the distance. Yeah. But uh, that's the that's what the U-Fox. These two are proper, these are museum horses, these two. We've not been over them, these are stadia or lies. And all this equipment here is used on a daily basis. Right, part of the, part of that's a very, that's a whole lot of horses, too big for these two. Right, hopefully, carry that. That's a lovely one, that's a great one. That's a nice soft one for the yeah. two years <laughs> So he's goose, isn't it? Good. Aye, proper goose. Full of size of Christmas dinner. <laughs> How old is it? How old is the goose? How old is the big goose? I'm not quite sure. They're all um, rescued. They're probably about oh, eight, yeah. eight years old. Eight years old, oh yeah. 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 Size of it, yeah. Oh, are you guys in it? Yeah. The duck's feeding Here's some of the birds of prey. It's a vulture. It's an ugly thing. There's going to be a display on shortly. So I'll stop and watch that. Right, well, good afternoon, ladies and gents. A minute or two is time. We're going to get started with the Eagle and Vulture display today. Before we get cracking, we'll just get this mic turned down a little bit so it doesn't blow you all away. And we can have a little bit of chat and tell you what's going to happen over the next 35, 40 minutes. That's about perfect, I think, now, Graham. Any touch more? Yep, that sounds smashing. Right, well, good morning, ladies and gents. Thank you for your time today. If you haven't had a chance to meet me yet, my name is Ben. This is lovely Rebecca. My beautiful dog, Luke, sat there behaving himself well. And our Eagles and Vultures patiently waiting a bit of food in those boxes. Just before we get started, free flying eagle and vulture around the general public. I like to do a bit of health and safety. Nothing too serious, is a bit of information for you guys, so you know what to expect and maybe what to do if things don't go quite according to plan. It can get a bit exciting some days. So first and most importantly today, guys, it must be only myself and Rebecca in the arena during the flying display. No other enthusiastic kids, furry four-legged friends, or photographers joining in with the show. They don't mix well with the hungry eagle or vulture. If you're eating today, we expect food a big part of any event. But be sensible with your food. Don't stand waving your bacon sandwich in the air while a hungry vulture circles overhead. You're all laughing. This is my 69th day at a show this year. I've lost count of how many times I see husband and wife, always the husband. Get me another one of these, one of them, they're brilliant, one of them. I think you're going to need it if you keep waving it about, lad. And last of all, although we've been here many times, for our fifth agricultural show we've done now for Beamish, and it's always great to get invited back, the birds have no idea where they are. It's an arena, they come out of a dark box, and they've got to think on the feed. They do have a truck about, they now and again go out of sight, Rebecca might have to have a chase around, but I do quite like everything to have a good fly. I don't like the birds just going backwards and forwards, I like it to get up for the good old blaster land. So what I'm getting to is this. If at any one point today while flying an eagle or a vulture looks like it's going to crash into you, it probably is. 
get out of the way, all right? <laughs> You've got to work with me a little bit. The small arena with some very big birds. I begin all my display wherever we are in the UK with a bird in the top middle box. This bird is called Arthur. And those keen eyes of you will see that he has an L plate on the box. The reason he has an L plate is last year he did do a six day solo tour of Somerset. So he's not supposed to do that six day tour. I'll bring him out and we'll get him all ready. Oh, oh, a little tiny radio tracking device that attached to everything before we fly it. Then we just give it a chance to have a nosy around and just pretty much lob it off. He's 11 pounds in weight with a wingspan just over 6 feet. He's a big lad. We'll get him to make his way into the arena, hit the brakes and pause there, and give him a little clap to get him in a good mood for me, guys. Hey. They love routines. And when you have a routine the same every day, you can generally get the very similar results. But when I come to a show, that routine at home goes out the window. I don't have my vehicle parked next to me. I don't often look like this. And the birds sort of pick up on that. So I'll have to work pretty hard today to make sure things do what they're supposed to do. But I quite like it now and again when they bend the rules a little bit. So we'll get him up and get him whizzing about and tell you a little bit about him. He is a red list endangered species. That basically means in a few short years unless something pretty drastic happens, we're going to lose this bird for good in the wild. Now we'll talk more about conservation in a moment or two's time, but first of all let's try and get a bit of work out of him. Arthur was originally brought into the UK after being wild trapped. He's a wild caught vulture. He was brought into the UK to go in a breeding project, but the breeding project never worked out. It never worked out because Arthur here doesn't like girls. <laughs> <laughs> a bit tricky to explain to an audience, I'm sure you'll appreciate. I would skirt around the subject and talk about the wonderful work conservation groups and company projects worldwide through the species such as that. But now and again while doing this place, you'll be heckled from the audience and a lady shouted out to me, how do you know he doesn't like girls? To which I replied, I was there to start, madam, I was involved in the project. But how do you know? I want to know. I thought you're not going to shut up. I'll tell you. I know Arthur here doesn't like female vultures because he unfortunately ate the first one. 18 months later tried to eat the second and three years later tried to eat the third. If you're eating your breeding partner, madam, it is no longer a conservation project. <laughs> so instead, this is his job. He's like a one bird PR team for myself and Rebecca have and do. A little farm in the top of the dales. We have a small selection of eagle and vulture from all around the world. And the idea is he can breed from these birds and eventually put a bit back into the wild. Down on ground level. I like this, you know. The minute you bring one to the floor, everything starts to change. That's because the ground in Africa is a dangerous place to be. Wild dog, hyena, a large African cat would all gobble up a vulture like that. So when he's on the floor, he has to walk around like he owns the place. Right now, this is Arthur's, I'm as hard as nails walk. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with me, I'll eat your grandma's Westy. Look at the size of him. Looks like a 15 year old boy walking through a town, you know? Beautiful pinks, blues and orange all over his face. He's one of the prettiest vultures you're ever going to see, if you can say that. And also very special too, for he's one of the only vultures in the world that will catch live food for himself. A lot of vultures, as you well know, are carrying feeders, but this one's a bit special. They will even go out hunting. Right, young man, we need another one. We've got about 30 minutes or so in this show, so we need to crack on and try and show you as much as possible in the time that we've got. So we'll send him off one more time, bring him in, and have a look at an eagle in a moment's time. I like it when you've got a bit of breeze like this. It just gives that bird a bit of help in hand. He's 11 pounds in weight. That's the weight of a fat baby. I was an 11 pound baby, believe it or not. And this thing weighs the same as me when I was born. Huge thing. Let's get him up, try and get a bit of breeze under his wings. He likes that tree in the corner. Look at this. Right across, a little bit of lift just then, he's gone. I think I'll have a little look in this tree today. Drive me mad, this. I don't like him landing in trees. I like him to go further away oh, and let's fly down. Let's go. And right now, he's definitely gone further away. We're going to leave him a second, though. I'm not going to rush straight away to him. Because in most cases, he'll have a whiz about. And then he'll suss out what to do and come and join us. Now, I get this only See at Beamish. Believe it or not, we do about 70 shows a year. And at Beamish, I get this. I get a perfect little bit of flying. And just as you're about to finish, he goes, I might just go and sit in that tree. Actually, I might go a bit further. Nice thing with him is, he's that. Big, you can usually see him even when he goes out the sight. 
Do I ever worry that we lose someone? It's always the back of your mind. But if you remember at the start, I attached a small radio tracking device to Arthur's leg. But even better than that, I have Rebecca, who right now at lightning speed has shot us on sight. Because what we have to be mega careful with, with birds like this, is he doesn't find himself a squashed edge up at the roadside. Right, well, good afternoon, ladies and gents. A minute or two's time, we're going to get started with the Eagle and Vulture display today. Before we get cracking, we'll just get this mic turned down a little bit so it doesn't blow you all away. And we can have a little bit of chat and tell you what's going to happen over the next 35, 40 minutes. That's about perfect, I think, there, yeah, Graham. Any touch more? Yep, that sounds smashing. Right, well, good morning, ladies and gents. Thank you for your time today. If you haven't had a chance to meet me yet, my name is Ben. This is lovely Rebecca. My beautiful dog, Luke, sat there behaving himself well. And our eagles and vultures patiently waiting a bit of food in those boxes. Just before we get started, free flying eagle and vulture around the general public. I like to do a bit of health and safety. Nothing too serious, it's a bit of information for you guys, so you know what to expect and maybe what to do if things don't go quite according to plan. It can get a bit exciting some days. So first and most importantly today, guys, it must be only myself and Rebecca in the arena during the flying display. No other enthusiastic kids, furry four-legged friends, or photographers joining in with the show. They don't mix well with the hungry eagle or vulture. If you're eating today, we expect food a big part of any event. But be sensible with your food. Don't stand waving your bacon sandwich in the air while a hungry vulture circles overhead. You're laughing. This is my 69th day at a show this year. I've lost count of how many times I see husband and wife, always the husband. Get me another one of these, one of them, they're brilliant, one of them. I think you're going to need it if you keep waving it about, lad. And last of all, although we've been here many times, but our fifth agricultural show we've done now for Beamish, and it's always great to get invited back, the birds have no idea where they are. It's an arena, they come out of a dark box, and they've got to think on their feet. They do have a truck about, they now and again go out of sight, Rebecca might have to have a chase around, but I do quite like everything to have a good fly. I don't like the birds just going backwards and forwards, I like it to get up for the good old blast around. So what I'm getting to is this. If at any one point today, while flying, an eagle or a vulture looks like it's going to crash into you, it probably is. Get out of the way, all right? <laughs> You've got to work with me a little bit. The small arena with some very big birds. I begin all my display wherever we are in the UK with a bird in the top middle box. This bird is called Arthur. And those keen eyes of you will see that he has an L plate on the box. The reason he has an L plate is last year. He did do a six-day solo tour of Somerset. <laughs> so he's not supposed to do that six-day tour. I'll bring him out and we'll get him all oh, ready. Oh, a little tiny radio tracking device that attached to everything before we fly it. Then we just give it a chance to have a nosy around and just pretty much lob it off. He's 11 pounds in weight with a wingspan just over six feet. He's a big lad. We'll get him to make his way into the arena, hit the brakes and pause there and give him a little clap to get him in a good mood for me, guys. Hey. They love routines, and when you have a routine of sin every day, you can generally get the very similar results. But when I come to a show, that routine at home goes out the window. I don't have my vehicle parked next to me. I don't often look like this. And the birds sort of pick up on that. So I'll have to work pretty hard today to make sure things do what they're supposed to do. But I quite like it now and again when they bend the rules a little bit. So we'll get him up and get him whizzing about and tell you a little bit about him. He is a red list endangered species. That basically means in a few short years, unless something pretty drastic happens, we're going to lose this bird for good in the wild. Now we'll talk more about conservation in a moment or two's time, but first of all, let's try and get a bit of work out of him. Arthur was originally brought into the UK after being wild trapped. He's a wild caught vulture. He was brought into the UK to go in a breeding project, but the breeding project never worked out. It never worked out because Arthur here doesn't like girls. <laughs> it's a bit tricky to explain to an audience, I'm sure you'll appreciate it. I would skirt around the subject and talk about the wonderful work conservation groups and company projects worldwide with the species such as that. But now and again while doing displays, you'll be heckled from the audience and a lady shouted out to me, how do you know he doesn't like girls? To which I replied, I was there at the start, madam, I was involved in the project. But how do you know? I want to know. I thought you're not going to shut up. I'll tell you. 
I know why I'm here, he doesn't like female bunches because he unfortunately ate the first one. 18 months later, tried to eat the second, and three years later, tried to eat the third. If you're eating your breeding partner, madam, it is no longer a conservation project. <laughs> so instead, this is his job. He's like a one bird PR team for what myself and Rebecca have and do. A little farm in the top of the dales. We have a small selection of eagle and vulture from all around the world. And the idea is he can breed from these birds and eventually put a bit back into the wild. Down on ground level. I like this, you know. The minute you bring one to the floor, everything starts to change. That's because the ground in Africa is a dangerous place to be. Wild dog, hyena, a large African cat would all gobble up a vulture like that. So when he's on the floor, he has to walk around like he owns the place. Right now, this is Arthur's, I'm as hard as nails walk. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with me, I'll eat your grandma's Westy. Look at the size of him. Looks like a 15 year old boy walking through a town, you know? Beautiful pinks, blues and orange all over his face. He's one of the prettiest vultures you're ever going to see, if you can say that. And also very special too, for he's one of the only vultures in the world that will catch live food for himself. A lot of vultures, as you well know, are carrying feeders, but this one's a bit special. They will even go out hunting. Right, young man, we need another one. We've got about 30 minutes or so in this show, so we need to crack on and try and show you as much as possible in the time that we've got. So we'll send him off one more time, bring him in, and have a look at an eagle in a moment's time. I like it when you've got a bit of breeze like this. It just gives that bird a bit of help in hand. He's 11 pounds in weight. That's the weight of a fat baby. I was an 11 pound baby, believe it or not. And this thing weighs the same as me when I was born. Huge thing. Let's get him up, try and get a bit of breeze under his wings. He likes that tree in the corner. Look at this. Right across, a little bit of lift just there, and he's gone. I think I'll have a little look in this tree today. Drive me mad, this. I don't like him landing in trees. I like him to go further away and go fly down. And right now, he's definitely gone further away. We're going to leave him a second, though. We're not going to rush straight away to him. Because in most cases, he'll have a whiz about, and then he'll suss out what to do and come and join us. Now, I get this only at Beamish. Believe it or not, we do about 70 shows a year. And at Beamish, I get this. I get a perfect little bit of flying, and just as you're about to finish, he goes, I might just go and sit in that tree. Actually, I might go a bit further. Nice thing with him is, he's that. Big, you can usually see him even when he goes out the sight. Do I ever worry that we lose him? Well, it's always the back of your mind. But if you remember at the start, I attached a small radio tracking device to Arthur's leg. But even better than that, I have Rebecca, who right now at lightning speed has shot that on sight. Because what we have to be mega careful with, with birds like this, is he doesn't find himself a squashed edge up at the roadside. Here's a little creature. Also a wild taken like Arthur brought in from Africa many years ago. This little vulture is the smallest member of our team and we call her Thelma. Thelma weighs only four pounds compared to the 11 pounds that Arthur was. A wingspan just over four feet, but she may be the smallest member of the gang, but she is now the oldest member at 24 years old. We can stick her on there because if we get a little vulture cameo in a minute's time, we might be able to get away with it and have them both flying about, which would be kind of cool to see. Have a quick look at her. Right now, beautiful bright pink face. She's dead excited. She knows food's on the way in a moment's time. So beautiful little creature. Also a wild taken like Arthur, brought in from Africa many years ago. This little vulture is the smallest member of our team, and we call her Thelma. Thelma weighs only four pounds compared to the 11 pounds that Arthur was. A wingspan just over four feet, but she may be the smallest member of the gang, but she is now the oldest member at 24 years old. We can stick her on there, because if we get a little vulture cameo in a minute's time, we might be able to get away with it and have them both flying about, which would be kind of cool to see. Have a quick look at her. Right now, beautiful bright pink face, she's dead excited, she knows food's on the way in a moment's time. So Got a jackdaw and she makes her way back towards us, swinging round over the arena, hitting the brakes very quick. And landing here. When you're watching me, you're not watching the food, which is waiting for you on the perch. So off you go, nice and quick. Look at her going, where's the food? 
<laughs> you weren't really paying attention, were you? I have a feeling today you're elsewhere in your head, young lady. That perch has got a bit of food waiting for you. You need to get across there nice and quick, because if I beat you to it, I'm going to get it before you get it. Look at it now. That's not as fast as Selma goes, that. We're going to get that up on here. Rebecca has very kindly come back with our large African vulture that she has recovered. Just come to the edge of the arena, Beck. You're all right, just come to the edge. And when you get to the edge, I'm going to help you out here a little bit. Look at that. Hello, big lad. Where have you been today? Since I've had a look around Beamish, it was quite exciting. <laughs> and what you get? See, this is the bit I don't mind. If you go for a truck about and don't get it right, make a mistake. As long as you can get them back in, that's all right, isn't it, you know? And because he is quite a big vulture, he does stick out kind of well. You just sit there and be good, young lady. Look at her. I'm going to eat him in a minute. They do mix kind of well, but not brilliantly well. Even you get, you're not getting around the applause for that bit of bad behaviour. Right, off we go, look at this. Lovely bit of flying. He's up and she's working well. We'll swing around one more time. Bring it to me, land her perfectly here. And give her a beautiful little film a nice round of applause. Yay. Well done. Yay. Hi, Beck. You had a busy day yesterday, Rebecca, you're chasing birds about the mission. You might get a busy day again today, man. Look at the girl. Right, we need you in there and out the way. Are you going to fly this next one with me? Yeah, that's both today. We'll fly this next one together. I think you'll probably be okay down there, and I'll go this end up here. The reason we fly this next one together, well, I'll be dead straight with you. He's one of life's wood of years. If you just leave him on his own, he will not get it right, and he will make a mistake. The last oh, five years has definitely shown that to me now. Appreciate He's a beautiful creature all the way from the Americas. Americas and we call this bird Bald Eagle. Bald Proper eagle. name, Bald Headed Eagle. Bald is your old fashioned term for white. So it simply means White Headed Eagle. We'll show him Rebecca, let him have a little nose here down for a minute or two's time. He'll blast across to us and land her on her arm. We're going to keep him in the arena today. So if he goes out the arena, it's not part of the display. Be warned. The reason two of us fly him, the reason we keep him in the arena is if at any one point during his display he goes out of sight, he just lands and waits to be recovered. <laughs> Not great that. Imagine being the guy in charge of the bald eagle if he's just landed 500 yards across a show field somewhere he definitely shouldn't be. Because on an evening time I walk around show fields and I see things that concern me. Zooming, and at times drive you absolutely crackers. You've got to put 110% into them because, as you can see right now, he's more interested in what's going on behind me than what's happening in front of me. Careful, and he's just a bit wobbly. Why have you got a bald eagle? We understand the importance of vultures in captivity nowadays. Never has it been more serious to try and keep these things alive. But bald eagles are doing remarkably well. Well, the reason we have a bald eagle is simple. They breed well in captivity. So last year, I bought him a girlfriend. The idea is, we get a breeding pair established, we train the firstborn eagle and use it in displays, and use that pair of eagles at home to rear the more trickier birds. Crowned eagle and white-headed vulture at home in pairs don't make their parents. If we can just switch the babies of the vultures with the eagles overnight, in the morning the eagles waking up thinking they've got ugly babies. We should be able to get away with it. We tried it a few years ago with steps, eagles and caterpillars, and it worked remarkably well. Spectacular at this. They will catch rabbit, hare, wolf, fox, and even deer in parts of the world. For those reasons alone, I don't think they make great display birds. If they're eating furry four-legged things, don't bring it into a situation like this in my eyes. Both can eat second none, but for this job, I prefer the other eagle the UK has got, and we call this a white-tailed sea eagle. My white-tailed sea eagle is 14 pounds in weight, has a wingspan of 8 feet. This particular bird was captive bred in Kazakhstan State Zoo and brought into the UK many years ago, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But the interesting bit of information to go with this one, it is the only eagle in 20 years of flying them that has successfully grabbed me round the head and face with both its feet. <laughs> said that recently and a guy in the audience said to me, she won't have meant it then, it would have been an accident. I was there, you know, made that. 
grab me like I was a 14 stone fish, give me a good old shave, let go, and walked off very happy with itself. <laughs> this next eagle is a horrible eagle. It doesn't like me, and I don't like it. <laughs> but we have a job to do, a very expensive boyfriend to buy for us, and a massive 90 by 30 foot enclosure that I'm currently building to the fund all that project. We have to do a few shows. I don't make you do anything you don't want to do. I've never been into that. I quite like you seeing every bit of the eagle, the good and the bad. So I'll stick it to sir and give it a minute to have a little look around. Quite like the look of this sheep, will you? Look at this. Then we'll work on a simple theory. The more you do, the more you can have. If you're lazy, nasty or aggressive, you're going back in that box. The more you work, the more food will come out of this bag and the bigger the rewards will be. So as I start and do the show and tell you a bit about it, just keep watching the flights. And as the flights get better, the food gets larger and just start to slowly twig, which is a grumpy thing and takes a bit of getting online. So we'll turn around and face it this way. We've got to sort of use this way and my back to you guys in this area here, because this direction is where the wind is coming from. So we're going to point our big heavy eagle into that bit of breeze and send her off that way. Hasn't worked brilliantly well with the vultures going towards that big old tree in the corner, but with the eagles it should be a touch easier. So you guys with your cameras there now, you're risking life and limb to be fair. Okay. But you should get a cracking photo in a moment or two's time, so we'll see what happens. Let's get up and get a movie, right? Look at it, straight out of the corner, a sneaky one. A little bit of breeze in that area is enough to carry our huge eagle. As she gets the wing correct, the return flight will be beautiful. Watch out on those return flights though, because they can be very low. Uh, give her a nice big clap, guys. Get her in a good mood for this today. Just, <laughs> originally, captive bred in Kazakhstan, Zoo brought into the UK to join the bird display team at Warwick Castle. Was, They're a great gang of lads there. I've known them all my career, and the best eagle trainers the UK has got by a mile. But that wouldn't settle down. Maybe If I'm going to get a female, I'm going to be more sensible. I'm not going to dive in and buy a bird that's five years old. I'm going to buy one that's a bit younger. So I bought oh, one at eight months old. Eight months old, that's a creature you can really work with. Look at Just the fully grown inside, but not yet filled out. Immature in plumage, she's not yet ready to breed for another five or six years. So when I got her, I began just to train her. I thought I won't take her on shows. I'll keep this one for myself. Size is big. But by 11 days in, it was that good, I thought we'll give her a spin out. She has been the nicest eagle I've ever worked with in all the time I've worked with her. She's an handful, because she's big. 18 pounds in weight, with a nine and a half foot wingspan. That is a big bird to do a display with. But I'll bring her out and give her a minute or two to have a look around. Often she'll wiggle her tail and just take it all. Because if you thought the white-tailed sea eagle just cleared your head down there, this thing doesn't, you know? You need to leap out the way for your life, guys, okay? If she goes to the loo, it'll make life easier, though, so let's fingers crossed we get that one. Right. Here, Ed, right, she's ready now. you just got to keep out the way and leave them to it. They have put a hand like that just there. That's me sort of going, right, young lady, are we ready? And with a bit of luck, she'll dive off in a moment's time. You don't get rapid things out of eagles. It takes a moment to think about it. So get ready and get your head out of the way. Well done. Yeah. We'll send it out into a bit of open space. The only bit of open space we've really got. It's a little bit of lift in that corner, not loads, but enough to get our massive eagle up and moving. But you're working these big eagles at large distances. So she comes back around now. She's got to get into that gap or over the tree, making her way towards oh, it, hey. coming downwind. This is quick. To get herself out the sky now, she's got to drop her legs and wiggle her bum to slow herself down. Oh, look at this. Whoa. Oh, Give it a clap, well done. Well done. We have a ropey one, this one. See if we can get this one right. Without the wind to help her, she's not going to go as far this time. So when she comes back in, it could be a little bit interesting. Watch out in this corner. I'm going to try and land her on my arm. It's a big eagle to do this with, so we'll try and see if it works. Oh, that'll 
Well done. Well Give done. her a nice big round of applause and a cracky bit of fun this morning. Well done. I'm going to get her safely across to the marquee and back on view for you guys to come and have a look at. Uh, Thank you very much for your time. Us. Maybe we'll catch you later. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Scotland, have these out from your shores, the British or the English, sorry, 
problems look. Some of these things play games, throwing the stone, putting the stone, picking the stone up. This they used to high on a wall. They used to get the stone, they used to come in and build the wall, they used to hide on the wall. It's supposed to be a test of strength for teenage to man. But because I'm such a showman, he's going to lift it and show that. Now, if you go and stab you, we'll get one of them to lift it above his head. Take some pictures. Yes, you put it down. I'll do it again. <laughs> It wasn't a fluke. Now there's another type of event, so do you put it down?